Calgary is more than just a gateway to the Canadian Rockies or the home of the Calgary Stampede. It is also a fantastic city to visit and for its size offers many attractions that similar cities simply cannot match. In this video, I'll show you what you can see and do in the city, where to stay, where to eat, and a few surprises along the way. I'll also touch on some of the attractions within an easy drive of Calgary, including Banff. The quickest way into Calgary, of course, is by airplane. The Calgary International Airport is the main gateway to the city with flights from all over North America and the world. You can also reach Calgary by car, bus, or train. Getting around Calgary is not actually a difficult thing to do. The streets are wide, they're well marked. Um, One-way streets you'll find plenty of in downtown Calgary. Uh, there are, however, seemingly always construction projects that somehow delay every trip that I have here, so be aware of that. Hotels in Calgary are situated primarily in four locations. The northeast, near the airport, the south, the west, and downtown. Choosing a location largely depends on your purpose and, of course, your needs. For instance, if you're wanting to be near the action, then the downtown might be best, but if you're stopping in Calgary and heading to Banff the next day, then the west side of the city might be a better option. Of course, you can use travel websites to book your hotels or contact some of the larger chains directly. However, I recommend first looking at the Visit Calgary website as it's a great place to start. The Visit Calgary website also has information on bed and breakfasts and even guest ranches if you want to feel like a cowboy. There is camping in and around the city, and once again, I think the best place to look is the Visit Calgary website for details and updates. As you would expect, there are hundreds upon hundreds of very good restaurants in the city. Some of the better areas to eat in Calgary include the Beltline and 17th Avenue area, and Inglewood, East Village, Kensington, and of course, downtown Calgary. Once again, a really good resource for restaurants is the Visit Calgary website. And if you're desperate for food and can't find anything, you know, you can always pop into Tim Hortons. Nightlife in Calgary is particularly active during the Calgary Stampede or after a Flames victory in the playoffs, which doesn't happen very often. And while the city is known for its country music, it offers far more than just that. Topping the list for the best areas for nightlife in Calgary are Kensington and the Beltline and 17th Avenue areas. Calgary has a number of world-class attractions, but let's start downtown. Perhaps the most visible attraction is the Calgary Tower. It opened in 1968 and has a restaurant at the top, a glass floor, no thank you, and is a great way to see the city. Located close to the Calgary Tower is the Glenbow Museum. This art and history museum focuses on Western Canadian history and indigenous cultures. The Stephen Avenue Walk is a pedestrian-friendly street in downtown Calgary lined with shops, restaurants, cafes, and historical buildings. It offers a vibrant atmosphere and loads of entertainment. Speaking of vibrant, the Peace Bridge on the north side of downtown is a fun thing to see and is a popular place for photography. If you want some peace and quiet and love gardens, try the Devonian Gardens. These indoor gardens have over 20,000 plants, koi ponds, and waterfalls. Connecting the buildings in downtown Calgary are a series of elevated walkways called the Plus 15s. The Plus 15 network consists of 86 bridges and over 16 kilometers of elevated, weather-protected, and climate-controlled walkways in downtown Calgary. And this is good because Calgary winter weather, well, it can be nasty. Connecting the entire city in the downtown core is the train system called the LRT. The LRT is free in the downtown area. On the east side of the downtown is Studio Bell, home to the National Music Center and some pretty interesting architecture. Speaking of interesting architecture, the nearby Calgary Library is a fun place to visit if you like books or design. Also on the east side of the downtown core is Fort Calgary, which showcases the history of the city. Close to here, Fort Calgary, is the Dean House, one of the original houses in Calgary. The Wonderland sculpture is a 39-foot-tall bent wire statue in the shape of a young girl's head. It's also a popular Instagram spot in the city of Calgary. There are also several significant attractions 
on the outer edge of downtown Calgary. But let's start with the most significant attraction in the city, the Calgary Stampede. Many visitors come to the city for one reason alone, the Calgary Stampede. This is one of the largest and most famous rodeos in the entire world, attracting over one million visitors every year. Actually, well more than one million visitors every single year. The Stampede is an annual 10-day event in early July and features rodeo competitions, chuck wagon races, live music performances, and a midway with carnival rides and games. This is a very big deal, and if you haven't come to the Stampede before, you might be surprised at how significant this event is. The history of the Calgary Stampede dates back to 1912 when Guy Wiedick, yep, that's his name, an American cowboy and promoter organized the rodeo and exhibition to showcase the skills and culture of the Western frontier. The first Stampede was a huge success and the rest is, as they say, history. As for visiting, it's important to plan ahead. Hotels book up months in advance and the best rodeo and chuck wagon tickets are also taken months ahead of the event. Parking near the grounds is very limited during the Stampede and my advice is very simple. Take the train called the LRT to the Stampede. There are two LRT stations that service the park. In addition to the events at the Stampede Park, the city is awash with activities during the Stampede. And here is an insider tip. If you really want to feel like a local, go to one of the free chuck wagon pancake breakfasts in the city. Some of these breakfasts attract thousands of people who enjoy pancakes, eggs, orange juice, and coffee, often for free. Also near the edge of town is the Calgary Zoo. The zoo is home to over 1,000 animals and is considered to be one of the top zoos in the world. It's also Canada's most visited zoo. Unique to this zoo is the six-acre prehistoric park, which features life-size dinosaurs in their recreated geographical environment. And no, they're not real. Close to the Calgary Zoo and a very short drive from downtown is the Telespark Science Center. This is a science museum with interactive exhibits, multimedia presentations, and hands-on activities. A little further from downtown is Heritage Park. Heritage Park is an historical village where you can step back in time and experience Western Canada's history through interactive exhibits, heritage buildings, a steam train, and various events. It's also one of Calgary's best attractions and the site of many movie shoots. If you like equestrian and horse jumping, then Spruce Meadows is a wonderful place to visit. They have many large equestrian events throughout the year. Spruce Meadows is considered to be one of the world's premier show jumping and equestrian facilities. On the west side of the city is Canada Olympic Park. This is a ski hill where actually I learned to ski and multi-purpose training and competition facility. Canada Olympic Park was also where Eddie the Eagle jumped and the Jamaican bobsled team did their thing. In the summer, there is downhill karting, which is like an alpine slide on steroids, mountain biking, mini golf, and a zip line. Off of that. If you have kids, you might be interested in Callaway Park. This amusement park is on the west side of the city and first opened in 1982. In fact, my sister worked here for several years. It's Western Canada's largest outdoor family amusement park. And by the way, they also have their own campground. If recreation is your thing, then Calgary has plenty to offer. In the winter, there is skiing in town, right here actually at Canada Olympic Park. Fortress Mountain and Nakiska are in Kananaskis country, and Mount Norquay, Sunshine Village, and Lake Louise are in Banff. In addition to these sports, there is every other winter sport you can think of from cross-country skiing to ice hockey. In the summer, there's plenty to offer as well, from golf to whitewater rafting and hiking, of course, in the nearby Rockies. If you prefer to watch rather than play, check out the Calgary Flames during the hockey season or the Calgary Stampeders in the summer. And by the way, did you know that Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, was actually a Calgary Stampeder before they cut him during his first season? If you are visiting Calgary, it is likely you also have plans to visit other areas near the city, most likely the Rocky Mountains. Well, the world famous Banff National Park is a little more than a one hour drive from the city of Calgary. The highlights in the park are many, but they do include the Banff town site, Lake Louise, 
Moraine Lake, although you can no longer drive to the lake in your personal vehicle and must take a shuttle bus, unfortunately, and Pato Lake. I have a very detailed video on Banff and the link is in the description below. Near Banff is the town of Canmore, which is a beautiful town on the edge of Banff and not quite as busy. It also offers additional lodging if you're having trouble finding an affordable hotel in the Banff area. Also near Banff is Kananaskis country, which is breathtaking and not nearly as busy as Banff. A little over 100 kilometers from Calgary is the city of Drumheller. This area has the Badlands and the famous Hoodoo rock formations. It's also one of the world's largest dinosaur and fossil areas and is the home to the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Paleontology. All right, the city of Calgary. This is truly one of Canada's greatest places to visit. If you have received some value from this video, please consider liking it or subscribing to the channel. And if you're planning a visit to Banff, I have a video on that too. Please click on that video right here.